If you're the owner of a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, like the Celestron Nexstar, Nexstar Evolution, CPC, or a Meet Schmidt Cassegrain, you probably know what this little tiny bit here is, right? It's the 0.63 reducer flattener. Celestron offers it, Meet offers it, and in principle, it kind of belongs to it. It's a default, it's a no-brainer to buy it. Now, all would be good. If there wouldn't be Starizona, Starizona is the inventor of the Hyperstar extension, and they claim that this here is trash, and that they have the much better reducer flattener. Is it like that? Let's figure it out. This is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander, and thanks for watching my channel. So this video consists of two parts. In the first part, I do some unboxing. I talk about specifications and about how to install this new reducer flattener. And in the second part, I will do some testing. So this is how the package looks like. Quite unspectacular. Let me smell at it. Cardboard, not leather, definitely not. So when you open it, there's some styrofoam and there it is. So again, Quite unspectacular, there's not even a manual, all you get is this here, the rest you find on the net. I think the first thing that you will immediately see, it's that it's more than double, I think it's about triple or even four times the height of the original reducer. It's much heavier, and by the way, it's also much more expensive, it's more than double what this guy here costs. So this here is $3.99 and this you get for about $170. So quite a difference. So from that point of view, it really, really has to perform that it's worth it. So they both are 0.63 reducer flatteners. So you get actually to the same focal length, you get to the same f-stop. But what is different is the back focus that is required and the way you attach it to the telescope. So if we start with our quite known SCT reducer, this is the one from Celestron, it screws right to the back of the telescope and afterwards you have to use such a T adapter and then some more spacers until you get to the camera. So you have a 105 millimeter back focus. Now let's look at this one. Here you only have a 90 millimeter back focus so 1.5 centimeter less. But obviously, as it is much, much longer, still the whole train at the end will be longer than with this reducer flatness. So that's just something to consider. The other thing is how you attach it. Here, at the telescope side, it cannot be screwed in. So how you do it, you get a two inch connector, you screw this into the telescope and then you slide actually the reducer flattener into this here as much as you can and you strongly tighten the screw because you don't want to have this here fall out with all the stuff added. So I don't like this that much because I just feel more safe is everything screwed into each other than just this one tightening screw holding on to all the stuff that's actually back here. So that's a little bit something of my concern. Now on the other side, you have actually a T connection. So you go straight away with some spacers at it and put in as much spaces as you need that you reach the required back focus. So I will wait now for some clear nights, which are rather rare at the moment. Then I will do some test shots with the Starizona one, and then we will see if it really is worth all the additional money. So, welcome to my computer and welcome to PixInsight. So from the moment you saw me talk before, I had to wait about two weeks until I had a clear night. And I used the chance and tried it out extensively. So, the first thing I want to show you is a flat file. 
which I did with the Starizona Reducer Flattener. And I have a ZWO ASI 2600 MC camera, which means it is an APS-C um, size sensor, so it's not full frame. So as you can see, there is still, obviously I'm here, extensively stretched. If I would just stretch, it would look less dramatic. But if I stretch to the max, you can see there is still vignetting. And it would obviously be even more if I would work with a full frame sensor. But when we compare this now to the flat of the Celestron reducer flattener, you see that by far it's less dramatic. So it also looks, the gradient looks much more smooth. And here it goes much more extreme into the black. So far so good, but let's look now at the real picture. So what you see here now is a single exposure, 60 seconds, of just a random star field. I didn't want to use a prominent nebula or something because what we're really interested in is the quality of the stars. And I just took 60 seconds so that we don't are influenced by any guiding error or something like that. So let's zoom now in and look at it. So this is now the full resolution, so one to one, and it's the left upper corner. And yes, they are not fully round, but given what I have seen before with the Celestron Reducer Flattener, it is much improved for this extreme place. So there might still be some small back focus issue, but when I think how much how prominent it was with the Celestron Reducer Flattener, and I never really got rid of it, it's just so much better. Also, look, if we go now down, Actually, that it would be back focused, it would have to be in this direction to be consequent. It isn't. So the stars are almost round here. Let's go now to the right bottom corner. Here we see now again some kind of a little bit egg shape, shaped stars. Up here they look pretty round, they're pretty good. And obviously, if we go to the middle, it looks really, really nice. So overall, this is a huge improvement to what I have seen before with the Celestron reducer. If we're now looking at the stacked picture, which I already did some processing, here you go. So let's also dive in here. Let's start with the middle. And it looks really, really nice. Really love these round stars. Here again, we obviously we see with some stars, we see a little bit of an egg shape. Others are still extremely round. Even up here, if you look now, these stars, they're pretty round. Lower left also. So it looked even now through the stacking, the arrow kind of got equalized out. They're not perfectly round, but this is something I can live with. I couldn't live with what I have seen with the Celestron reducer. It was really a nightmare. But here, this is great. This is great. And, and I love the picture overall now. It looks so nice, the starry sky. And by coincidence, I found now a very good test, which actually shows if the quality of the stars is good or not. And that's Star Exterminator. And if you have seen my videos about Star Exterminator, you know that Star Exterminator doesn't work well with bad stars. So if you have blurry stars, if you are extremely deformed stars, Star Exterminator will not erase these stars by design. And if you want to know more about that, have a look at these videos. But so what I did now to kind of check, are these stars now good or not? And let's just let Star Exterminator run over it and that is the result. They're all gone, except of one, two, three, four on this side, but otherwise all the stars are gone. And so that's a good sign that I think I can be happy with the star quality that the Starizona Reducer Flattener actually produces. So with that, that was then now the, the end picture that I created based on these few um, exposures that I did and I stacked together. So let's sum that all up. I think overall what we just have seen, I'm really really happy with the pictures that I got 
from the Starizona flattener reducer. The star quality is just so much better than what I was used with the Celestron reducer. And what was also amazing is how easy it was to find back focus. I almost despaired about that with the Celestron reducer flattener and I never got to a really decent result. And here I did one adjustment and it looks decent. There is obviously never a match from the star quality to a refractor, but that doesn't also have to be. A Schmidt Cassegrain has other qualities than a refractor and we have to focus on these. But I was just getting tired every time I posted the picture, get some comments, oh by the way you have a back focus problem and I, and I was like, oh yeah, I know. So now this issue is solved. So now let's go back to something I mentioned at the first part of the video. And that was how the reducer flattener is attached to the telescope with actually inserting it in this two inch eyepiece converter instead of screwing it on. Having worked now with the system, I would say I still have this initial concern, this kind of not feeling so comfortable knowing that if out of whatever reason this screw kind of loosens my whole image train will fall to the floor. That said, I also saw the beauty of this that it's really easy to actually take it out, it's really easy to turn it if needed, so it also has its upsides. So putting all of that together, even with the higher price point, for me, Starizona gets two thumbs up for this product. I'm really happy that I have it and I can absolutely recommend it to you. I would be happy if you could put in the comments below your experience, if you have also the Starizona reducer flattener, how you deal with this kind of unsafe method of attaching it to the telescope or any other tips or tricks you have about it. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel so that you keep updated on the next videos that are just around the corner. See you next time and clear skies.